Hello there. My name is James. Welcome to my channel, Gear Solid. Over the past couple of weeks, I've been having a lot of questions from people on Quora, and I felt, why don't I share these on YouTube? Because these are very good questions that, if answered properly, would be very much um, valuable to most people who are also wanting same um, answers. So I decided to go through my answer my answer whatever they call it and then answer a lot of questions there are a lot of questions here which i'll be going through and then picking most of the important ones and then answering them mostly going to be gadgets filmmaking software hardware and yeah the rest everything i am um, tech so without wasting much time let's get into it Question one, question one, whoa, it's an Apple question, okay? So question one says, why is the Apple M1 MacBook Pro cheaper than the Apple Intel? I think what he meant to say is, why is the Apple M1 MacBook Pro cheaper than the Apple Intel based version? So um, with this one, a lot of factors have to be considered, okay? number one would be apple tax okay that's how they call it the apple tax since apple equipped their own chips in the new macbook pros users weren't charged for intel like upgrades moreover in the us the 512 gigabyte m1 macbook is priced at 1500 whilst the 512 gigabytes intel macbook is priced at 1800 see so that's a 300 dollar difference which served as tax to intel so clearly what's happening here is apple got rid of intel so they don't have to pay intel anything so apple is making taking their own money and sharing it with nobody and that's one factor that has contributed to their to the price tag the, the low price tag that you are seeing number two would have to be performance performance apple m1 chip is based on a12 and a14 bionic chip um, architecture in simple terms it means apple brought their years of effort on ios to macbooks the cpu in m1 is closely unified with um, the ram Apple is gradually bringing the mobile device technology onto the Mac system. Moreover, a unified RAM is faster as the computational time between when the processor sends the order and the RAM receives is swift compared to the usual system. This also means that the base 8GB model performs better than other traditional um, systems. So um, let's move on. I would explain further. My number three would be the Apple M1 chip versus the Intel processor, okay? If you are confused about why Apple calls M1 chipset and refers to Intel as a processor, let me make this easy for you. The Cupertino giant labels its M1 as a system on a chip. It's a system on a chip known as the SOC because it takes various separate components and amalgamates all of them on one single chip. These components include the CPU, the USB and Thunderbolt controllers, graphics processor, the secure enclave image signal processing, audio processing hardware, neural engine, etc. Every chip element is contained in the Apple M1's chip, whereas they are unconnected in the Intel based version. Now, this unified system is cheaper to build than the ununified system that Intel brought on board. So with this architecture, they are able to cut down costs. And that's one factor that has contributed to the price tag that you are seeing on the M1. My number four is going to be customization. Customization. M1 MacBooks don't have 32 gigabyte RAM option. You can trust Apple to be a little unpredictable sometimes and not give users a high level of customization. Having less RAM and storage means cheaper option. The same isn't with Intel MacBooks. Nope, nope, Intel doesn't do that. 
fewer ports also means thinner laptop and reduced cost. The M1 MacBook have two Thunderbolt ports for connectivity, whereas the Intel MacBooks have four Thunderbolt and eGPU. Okay, so from what I have said so far, you can judge for yourself the substitution and amalgamation they've made in the M1 and also getting rid of Intel. So Intel now wouldn't have to charge Apple because it's not offering Apple anything, hence cutting down the cost on the M1 MacBook Pro. So let me move on to my second question. It says, how can I easily produce a video and edit free of charge? I don't understand this one. How easy, how easy, how easy. Okay, so I think I'm getting this guy. What he means is, how is he going to produce a movie without spending a dime, okay? Without spending a dime, whether it's being cinematography, camera works, editing, sound, everything. This guy doesn't want to pay for anything. And now he wants a solution to this. You don't want to pay for anything. My answer would be, get your friends to do it. If you are a filmmaker, definitely you have friends who do this. The only thing you'd have to do, I mean, you can't say you won't spend anything because you would have to buy food, okay? You would have to provide for them transportation, everything. You would have to factor all that. And then if they are not charging you for anything, you can, you can say you, don't, you are not um, 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 paying. But you can't say you are not spending at all. I mean, you'd have to be a little bit um, um, uh, good to them, okay? They can't just come and leave like that. So prepare something on you, keep something on you. If they come, buy them snacks, buy them breakfast, lunch, supper. Pay for their transportation in and out. So get your friends to do it. Get your friends to do it. That would be the, that would be my only solution to this one. So um, my next question here is, it says, would Apple M1 computers be powerful than Windows computers in the nearby future? Wow, I like this question. I like this question. M1, M1, I think um, he got, he missed the question over there. It should have been M series, okay? Okay, so assuming you meant to say Apple M series, not M1. Well, the M series have good advantage good speed low power consumption and low price m1 is just an um, it's just a first generation and there are going to be um, subsequent generations coming up in the nearby future now this is a little hard to explain comparing x86 to arm isn't fair now arm succeeds in um, hardware accelerated workflow like image processing or a1 whereas x86 Succeeds in raw traditional CPU, GPU based compute. Now, the M1 is Apple's entry processor, whose SOC is not intended to compete with mid to high end desktops. Okay, I have no doubt at this moment that subsequent Apple Silicon would um, outperform every Intel chip in its class. When it comes to workstation and gaming PC, we don't know how long it's going to take Apple Silicon chip to stand head to head with gaming and workstation power. Let's wait for the M2 or MX or whatever they call it, which will be launched this year. Maybe that's when we might be able to gauge how fast Apple can scale um, this architecture. And from there, maybe it will be easy to predict how long it will take to get leading in class compute power in a, in a power workstation like the Mac Pro. Keep in mind, Apple Silicon cannot be compared to um, Intel or AMD on specs alone. Performance goes beyond megahertz and gigahertz and all that. The whole system efficiency plays a major role. Okay, the whole system, the whole system, the whole system. Apple has something, I'm sure they have something up under their sleeves but hey let's wait to see what the future holds now what about graphics we design gpus that deliver the maximum graphics performance and the thermal envelope of each of our products this results in a balanced system with a gpu that complements the incredible performance of our cpu complex 
Typically, PCs can't achieve this balance with integrated graphics. To get great graphics performance, they have to use a discrete chip which consumes a lot of power. M1 is different. With its integrated graphics, we get the best of both worlds, incredible performance and low power. The GPU on M1 benefits from years of thorough analysis of Mac applications. It's the most advanced graphics processor we've ever created. And with up to eight of these GPU cores, M1 is capable of executing nearly 25,000 threads at a time, from teraflops to texture bandwidth to fill rate, along with its incredible efficiency, M1's GPU is in a class of its own. Here is the graphics performance on power usage of that same PC laptop chip. And here's M1. M1 delivers significantly higher performance at every power level. With M1 delivering up to two times more graphics performance than the PC chip. And again, M1 can deliver the peak performance of the PC chip while using just one third of the power. When it comes to personal computers, M1 has the world's fastest integrated graphics.